Hey there, my name's Curtis Lucas, and you're watching Empire Building. This is going to be one part in a series of very quick videos where I'm going to address a number of questions I've been getting over and over and over again down in the comments. I want to make these videos searchable, so I'm going to stick to one topic per video. Next question. I think this one is very important. This was left by a viewer down in the comments that pointed me towards a Reddit post. So I'm just going to read the post, so bear with me. I spent the last week and a half researching Bitcoin mining, looking at financials, purchase orders, equipment, making spreadsheets, etc. I don't see any possible world where owning 10,000 mining units and an order for another 25,000 to arrive by October imputes a 1 billion plus valuation, especially when there will be close to 1 million of these units manufactured by that time. There is nothing proprietary about what Riot does. What they do is done 1,000 times over across the world. Buy mining hardware, plug it in. Is the total market cap for Bitcoin mining somehow in the trillions? If owning these units is so amazingly valuable, why are the manufacturers selling them rather than using them to mine? I'm wondering if I'm missing something here. So this is a very good question, and I have touched on this on some of the previous videos. Yes, it is true that none of these mining companies have anything really proprietary. And by that, what we're talking about is what Warren Buffett would call a moat. What, you're trying to, what, what we're trying to find is a business that for one reason or another, it can be, it can be because it's the low cost producer in some area, it can be because it, uh, it has a natural franchise, because of service capabilities, it could, it could be because of its position in the consumer's mind, it can be because of a technological advantage, for any kind of reason at all, that it has this moat around it. And then, our, then what we have to decide is, is, is all moats are, are subject to attack in a capitalistic system. So everybody is going to try, if you've got a big castle in there, people are going to be trying to figure out how to get to it. Or do they? You see, while this technology is not proprietary, in fact, it's open source. That's what Bitcoin is, free to everyone. But this mining hardware is specialized. Anyone can get their hands on it if you're willing to pay the price. If I want to go online and buy the most efficient miner available, I can do that. But I'm going to pay way more if I'm only buying one. And thus, the time it will take to pay that miner off in terms of the Bitcoin it produces, I might as well just buy Bitcoin itself and let it appreciate. But there's another problem. Let's say, okay, you're gonna buy it at scale, like Riot and Mara. Well, you've also got to deploy those miners. You need a facility. You need to be able to source a very large amount of power at a very low cost. You also need to be able to deal with the heat that these miners put off. So in answer to the question, why don't the manufacturers just mine themselves? Oh, they do, but they can produce far more than they could possibly deploy on their own. But even in the amounts that they can produce it at, it is not fast enough to keep up with how fast the price can move. I've pointed this out before, during the 2017 bull run, the difficulty rate went up six and a half times, meaning there's six and a half times more power on the network than there was at the beginning of 2017. But as we know, the price went up 20 fold. Even during the bear market, the difficulty rate on the blockchain continued to climb. So the reality is, it's just simple math. We do have to be prepared for what will happen during the next bear market. But I think the narrative around Bitcoin has changed substantially. I think we will see a pullback in price at some point, but I don't think it'll be for as long a duration or as significant a fall as we've seen in the past. Now, obviously, I can't back that up, but except to say that whenever a market demonstrates a pattern that people have caught on to, it's unlikely for that pattern to repeat itself, despite what everyone thinks is true. But for me, I don't pay attention to that because my focus is not on the price necessarily. My focus is always on the technology itself. And I also understand human mentality. Bitcoin is an incredible story and the markets love incredible stories. Yes, as a result, they do get overbought, but hey, that's fine, I'm counting on it. That doesn't make the technology any less incredible. And just because the technology is not proprietary doesn't mean there's no moat. They can only produce these chips so fast and they can only be deployed so quickly. 
Between Mara and Riot, they've cornered the entire supply of S19 miners for the whole of 2021. Anyone else has got to wait till next year. So their only option is to go to the less efficient alternatives, which is what we will continue to see roll out. And that's fine. But if you want to mine with the best, you've got to have the cheapest electricity and the most efficient miners. This is why I had zero problem with Mara taking the risk of diluting their shares while they're so low in price. Yes, they could have got that $200 million by diluting their shares far less if they had waited until the stock was say over 20 or $30, but then they might have missed out on the opportunity to acquire 75,000 S19 miners before anybody else could. But I understand why this can be confusing because this is not like any other sector we've ever seen before. It's very difficult to understand how to evaluate these things. And sometimes it seems so obvious that there has to be something else more to it. But that's the incredible part. You're not dealing with an industry where there's a limited number of customers. There will always be demand for the product that these companies produce. And there is a fixed amount that can be produced worldwide, no matter how many companies jump on board or how much hash power they throw at it. They can't make any more than the protocol will allow. This is why I've always said that it is the miners who propagate the blockchain. The system is self-correcting. The cost to mine one Bitcoin will climb over time. And you can bet no miner is gonna sell their Bitcoin for less than it costs them to mine it. This provides us with a hard floor. But if you're wondering, can these companies make money? Hell yeah. That's why they're doing it. And pretty soon, you'll be doing it too, in your own living room, because it'll be profitable to do so. Imagine how profitable it'll be for them. So yeah, we don't have to make this complicated. It's as simple as it seems. Just be grateful and be glad you understand it now. That's all for this one. Now let's get back to Empire Building. Bye.